A uh, user on the Adobe forums has uh, a problem with chroma key uh, using key light. Actually, you have a problem with anything. This is the uh, original screenshot that he posted on the user forum. So uh, let me just zoom in a little bit here to uh, take a look at this image. Okay. We've got several problems that I can see right now. This color uh, is, is a, a, an extremely poor choice for trying to use key light because there are actually uh, a lot of tones from this color, both in this uh, actor, this piano player's face, also in the, uh, in the brocade, on the, uh, in the design on the jacket, and we also have a tremendous amount of reflections in the piano that are going to have to be dealt with. So let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, the final composite, um, and I'll just kind of analyze uh, what is done. the The background image here, I'll solo that. That's an Adobe stock layer. I'll press the U key twice. I have applied camera lens blur to. Uh, simulate depth of field okay so we won't worry about that anymore the original footage layer right here has been keyed out I'll press the U key twice the only thing on it is the mask the the original mask here we get rid of the transparency grid so we'll just look at it black easier to see the mask so we just have the original mask I just copied uh, the the original mask and that's 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 basically all that uh, was done to to that layer okay it was keyed however using an alpha track mat from a copy of the original footage so this is the original footage with a mask on it this is a copy of the original footage that has I'll press the U key twice it has the mask on it right there and it has lumetric color and key light applied okay take a look at what I've done to make this work so let's just turn this layer on temporarily okay and solo it and kind of analyze what's going on of course we've we've got the mask okay and we got lumetric color applied so this is what I was able to uh, accomplish using Lumetri. Uh, this is everything I changed. The curves, the hue saturation curve, um, and the hue versus hue picker. So let's look at the effects control panel. So you will find uh, under the basic correction, you get none. Under curves, you will find hue versus saturation and you will find hue versus hue. So let me just reset this very quickly to show you uh, what, what I did to get an, a, a suitable background color in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the hue versus saturation. I'm going to sample this color oh, on a decent average somewhere in there that gives me three little pointers and I want to grab the color that's this one it happens to be this particular color is right on the edge and I'm gonna crank the saturation all the way up so this is as saturated as we can make that color that we sampled now we'll go to the hue versus hue and I will sample this new saturated color and then I'm going to drag the slider up until I get a really decent solid green. That gives me very good green to work with. Okay? I'm not worrying about anything except the green in this case. Okay? So now we can move down to key light. I'll turn on key light. Okay, so now we've got key light down here. Again, you press the U key twice, it shows shows everything that I did adjusted to key light. I uh, sampled the screen color, okay, 
I adjusted the screen gain, the screen balance, uh, and did a little bit of rollback. Let's take a look at the mat. So combined mat, I've got a really good edge here. So that's that's basically all the controls that I had to to use in Keylight to generate that mat. So we'll take the final result and now this layer the copy corrected for Keating is just used as an alpha track mat for the original footage. We've still got problems on the piano. Let me turn on the transparency grid here. We've still got problems on the piano, uh, but we're going to fix those with another, with another copy of the original footage. Okay, so here's the footage of the rotoscoped piano. It also has, I'll press the U key twice, I've applied uh, the mask is just for the piano. Let's solo this layer so we can just take a look at this, just this layer. Solo the, the, the layer and what I've done is, I don't need to look at the mask, the, with Lumetri Color I've used the um, exposure, cut the exposure down just a little bit and then I've used the HSL secondary adjustments to get rid of uh, the color in the reflection. So let's basically uh, reset Lumetri. Here it is. What I want to do is go down to the HSL secondary and I need to start creating a mat. Okay. We'll show the mask. There is no mask. Okay. I'm going to sample darker color and I'm going to add a lighter color and, and I can show the mask and start making uh, adjustments. Okay. So under refine we've got these sliders here. Okay. And these sliders will help us control this mask. So first is hue. Let's Let's expand the hue just a little bit. Click and drag. Expand that out. Okay, we're expanding the hue. We're going to expand the saturation a little bit. And you can actually, if you, if you turn off the show mask when you're expanding these values, you move in the values, you can see what you're doing. And Let's let's expand this out a little bit more. What I'm basically trying to do is I want to get rid of all this color and we'll go down to saturation. I'm going to pull the saturation all the way down to zero. So now I have basically removed all the color that was reflected in the piano. Just that color using just a small portion of the Lumetri color effect. So now that that's done, unsolo that layer and I'm going to turn off the adjustment layer to start with. And you can see that we have removed the offending blue color from the piano under the hands. It looks pretty darn good. Okay, so once again that's just a footage copy. There's basically everything that I uh, adjusted, HSL secondary, and brought the saturation down. Final adjustment on the composite is just an adjustment layer with Lumetri. Uh, again, I'll just press the U key twice here. Change the white balance a little bit. Um, I did some curves adjustment. So a little bit of curves adjustment to give it a more clubby look. Uh, I also desaturated this same 
uh, the same turquoise uh, section is just a little bit. That's basically it. And then I added a little uh, uh, a little vignette to uh, to smooth things out. Okay, so that basically uh, basically takes care of it. Let's just review one more time very quickly. So <clears throat> I have a stock image background that has camera lens blur. The original footage that has a garbage mask around it for creating the transparency around the piano player I have applied Lumetri with the um, hue versus saturation and hue versus hue uh, curves adjustment to get the, the, the good bright green color that I need for a good key and then I use that as a track mat for the original footage. The rotoscope piano also has Lumetri applied and I use the HSL secondary um, to basically remove all of the, uh, the, the turquoise color from the piano. And one final adjustment with Lumetri on top as an adjustment layer. Okay, so that's, that's basically the workflow um, when you run into problems. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, I can tell you that in all my years of using After Effects, uh, I have had very, very few chroma key projects that could be done with just two layers. They almost always require additional masks and they almost all re always require some additional adjustment for different sections of the image. So this is just one of the possible ways to do this and I hope that it helps.